Thank you, Danny. So I'd like to welcome you guys um, today. Um, my name is Sarah Odin. A little bit of background um, on uh, this presentation. So, and, and on myself, I was born and raised in the Valley. I am not a mass comm major, um, by the way. I'll get to that in a second. But um, I grew up in Monta Vista, and I chose Adam State because for several different reasons. Um, it's close to home for me, and uh, I'm very close to my family. And also, I was able to um, get very nice uh, financial aid and scholarship through academics. And I also really appreciate the staff here. I think that, um, like Danny, a lot of the professors are really good at actually working with students um, and giving them more individual attention um, so that they can really grow and develop um, skills that they are interested in. Um, so I am a senior psychology major. Uh, I have a double emphasis, uh, developmental and clinical psychology, and I'm working on finishing an environmental science minor as well. But today I'm not going to be talking to you about climate change or about psychology per se, but I am going to be talking to you about how to college in a video series. Surprisingly, there is actually a lot of psychology involved with making a film. Um, Whenever I was looking through some of the classes and trying to decide maybe something that I would like to take that wasn't really in my area, um, just, just kind of for fun, I saw this uh, digital filmmaking class pop up and I thought, oh, that would be really interesting. Um, I honestly think that filmmaking is really, really difficult. I always wondered watching movies, things like that, how people actually make these things. There's a lot of psychology and a lot of communication involved. Um, in actual filmmaking, uh, how do you communicate certain ideas? How do you communicate certain emotions? Um, what sorts of camera angles and lightings you know, communicate different things? There's, there's a lot of different components to digital filmmaking that do mesh with psychology. Um, but I also thought that it would just be kind of fun to take uh, a film class. I'd never done anything like this before. Um, and then another factor in um, my decision was the influence of um, YouTube, which we'll talk about in just a second. So the actual class, like Danny mentioned, um, basically had three different projects throughout the semester that you work on and learn different aspects about filmmaking. Uh, the first one that we worked on was a narrative, and so my group, we worked on a, a movie that we had created about the life of a pen. And that was really exciting, trying to figure out how to create this um, perspective of a pen and its life. If you think about it, if you have a pen, all the things that it goes through, all the traumas <laughs> that it goes through, all the little moments that it sees that aren't you know, obvious to everyone else, we thought it would be really exciting to try to do that. It was very challenging. <laughs> and one of the things I learned just from that section was the importance of continuity. So continuity is whenever you take a shot and you take another shot, making sure things are in the same place. So you don't suddenly have your main character, the pen, facing the other direction or, or um, not in the same place. It, things like that really became obvious. So that was something I learned from that project. Um, then we also did a documentary. Uh, I was in a different group for this project, and we did a documentary on shoes and how much college students spend on them, how many pairs they have what value they place in them and how they feel that expresses or does not express their individuality. Um, and that was a really interesting <coughs> project because it really showed a lot about film angles. I had no idea the interviews could be so complicated. But whenever we started creating that, there was a lot of, oh, well, where do you place the person in the frame? Um, how do you ask questions and interact with them without constantly having your voice being like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh, I see, in the background, because that's really annoying. Um, but I learned a lot through those projects. And then when we got to experimental uh, projects, I was really excited because I thought, wow, there's so many things I could try, but I really was interested in trying to create a, a YouTube video, a how-to video um, on how to college. Um, YouTube itself, just some statistics, is one of the best ways to actually pass on a message right now. Um, 
there are more than one billion users of YouTube, and I thought this was a really interesting statistic. More than 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. That is crazy. That is so much opportunity and so much time to communicate any sort of message. And so on YouTube, there's <coughs> a diversity of subjects. There's a lot of how-to videos. There's a lot of videos about gaming. There's a lot of videos about, um, about politics and society. There's a lot of you know, funny videos that people have created. And there's a lot of cat videos. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so it's a really good way to actually reach um, youth and young adults uh, due to you know, the accessibility and uh, technology through which it is accessed um, constantly it's on social media. Any, anyone uses social media, um, but right now half of the YouTube usage is actually from mobile devices. So how many of you have smartphones, watch YouTube videos on smartphones? Yeah, yeah, so it's extremely accessible, maybe more accessible than sitting down to watch the news at night. Um, it's right there and you can watch things as many times as you want. You can look up things, it, they're just right at your fingertips. So if you're wanting to create any sort of message or any sort of, I guess, guide or um, if you really want to put anything out there, this is a really good way to do it. Um, also on YouTube, there's many channels. So people have their own channels, they create videos. It's actually um, kind of a career for some people they put out weekly videos, and because of how many subscribers, you know, some, some of them have millions of subscribers, some of them hundreds of thousands, um, they're able to make money through advertising um, on those videos. So YouTube puts in advertisements that brings in rent, uh, revenue, and some people actually are able to make a little extra side money, some of them a living off of creating these types of videos. It's a super interesting, um, addition to our culture that's very new um, from a sociology point of view it's kind of exciting because we've never had this kind of technology we're still seeing how it's changing our society and the immediacy of it is also very interesting because um, it is right there you can access it at any time so communication it's a pretty good way to communicate anything to create any sort of art so whenever we got to the experimental um, project and I knew I wanted to create a how-to video, I started thinking about what I wanted to actually talk about. Um, what would be useful to know? All right, so now I have a question for you guys. What, if, if you could go back at any point in time and tell yourself something, when would you go back to and what would you tell yourself? Does anyone have any ideas on that? Yeah, what do you think? I'd go back to eight years old and tell myself that all will change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to go back and give that reassurance that, you know, you're, it's going to be okay. Um, for myself, there's a lot of things about college that if I could go back to my freshman self, I would definitely educate myself in. Um, because it is a time of many changes. Um, it's a change of lifestyle. Obviously, it's a change of education and the intensity of that. It is a really big change in environment. Suddenly, you're not at home. You're surrounded by um, so many new people. And it is a, it's very different from anywhere else you may have been before. So there's a lot of adjustments that uh, take some learning um, in that. So I decided then to make, this, to make my video series about how to college. So some of the ideas that I wanted to touch on were how to find food. Um, on book costs, studying habits, how to survive finals week, um, how to do your laundry, it's a big one, um, how to be social, maybe how to survive heartbreak. I'm still kind of coming up with ideas of, of different things that I might want to do eventually. My brother's about to go off to college. He's graduating this year, so I'm making a special video for him shh, right now, um, just basically on kind of, you know, this is a time of transition, but always know that we're here you know, if you need any of that support. Um, so I was not able to make all of these videos. The ones that I did make during the um, time that I was in this class were the book costs and the how to do your laundry. 
So I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the how to do your laundry, and then I'll actually show you the video that I made. Issues that I addressed in this video were quarters. Um, at the time that I was using the machines still um, in the dorms, you could not use a card. Now you can, so it's a little bit easier, but it was a big hassle to go get quarters and come back and not lose them and to actually use them in the machines. Some of the machines do eat them. Um, you cannot get your change back sometimes. Um, also, fun colors. One time I was in the laundry room and there's this uh, young male in there who's also doing his laundry and he reaches in the, the uh, washing machine and he pulls out a towel and he goes, Ugh. and I look over and it's completely pink. And I know that's probably something um, that some people have experienced, maybe not, because it's a pretty classic example of uh, laundry mishaps. But um, if it is your first time doing your laundry, you may not realize reds and whites don't mix on hot. Um, also, I'm going to address the subject of going commando. And uh, without further ado, which by the way, um, I don't know if that's, you know, it, it, that, that's going without underwear. So without further ado, this is how to do your laundry. So due to time, I am going to go ahead and just let that be a little preview. If you want to watch the rest of this, it, it is on YouTube, both under the Grizzly Productions. And um, also, it is, I created a YouTube channel. I have one subscriber. Uh, so you can always go there to watch the rest of that. Um, and then the other video that I had created was uh, about book costs. This was one of the most unexpectedly expensive adventures I've ever had in college. I had no idea. And the first time that I actually went in to go buy books, I almost had a heart attack at the register because that was the most money I've ever spent on anything in my entire life. And so then I started buying them online <laughs> after that adventure. But even online, you can easily spend hundreds of dollars on your books, depending on what courses you're taking. Um, and so I you know, asked myself over and over again, how on earth are these books worth so much money? Obviously, we have to buy them, so there's that. But also, I just couldn't fathom how the creation of a textbook could you know, be so expensive material-wise. Maybe, maybe it really is, but... Um, so I decided to actually make the most use out of the money that I spent on my textbooks. And I started thinking about the, the multifunctionality of textbooks and all the different... Um, regular everyday items you could replace with textbooks. And so I made uh, this video about the uses of um, your many textbooks and so why when you add up all those prices they actually are worth several yes, hundred dollars. Don't have money for furniture? It's alright, stay 
stack some books up and they'll do just fine. Hey, come on in. Have a seat. Oh, great, thanks. So again, just a preview, I'm going to pause it and come right back. So at the end of this video, the number that I had for a, let's see, back here, for a total was something like uh, 200, let's see, $229.75 um, based off of those prices of, of all the different uh, uses I found for textbooks. Again, you can watch the complete version on the Grizzly uh, video production site or on my YouTube channel. Um, either way, um, these videos were a lot of fun to make um, and I did learn a lot. I learned that it was really weird to actually film myself and then to edit myself. That was very strange. Um, if you have ever tried to watch yourself talk for any amount of time, it is r a really bizarre experience and kind of uncomfortable. Um, but it also did give me a lot of insight to if I, you know, whenever I do make the, the next upcoming videos, I really want to make sure that I, uh, I'm, I'm catching certain things that I have done. You know, maybe I can make my voice more animated or um, use different kinds of techniques. I did learn a lot. One of the most fun parts of this was actually inputting the music. I got royalty free music um, and input it in different areas and that actually added um, a lot to it, I thought. And it was just a lot of fun creating the different moods with the different types of music. Future plans, I do want to actually go back and complete more of these because I feel like they could be really useful. Um, to incoming students. Um, and also, it was you know fun to make, and I could extend it to not just college, but once I graduate, other things in life. So I also uh, want to thank Danny so much for his guidance and um, assistance in these uh, projects. And I also want to thank um, those of you from the Student Scholar Days uh, event. I think that it's a really good event and a really good way to actually show students, you know, hard work that they, you know, maybe they, they go through and they, they present it in class, things like that, and then you go on to the next thing. It's really nice to actually be able to present it to um, other people as well. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Do you guys have any questions? All right. Thank you.